Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is the Gigabyte Z77X UP4 TH motherboard and of course the Z77 chipset supports the latest Ivy Bridge processors and is also backwards compatible with LGA 1155 socket Sandy Bridge processors and the TH in the name means that it has Thunderbolt support. Thunderbolt is the latest technology from Intel that allows transfer rates of up to 10 gigabits per second and of course that is a lot higher than USB 3 and Gigabyte has released the Z77X-UP4 TH to introduce dual Thunderbolt connections on a mainstream motherboard. Usually it is reserved on higher end models currently. Higher end laptops and higher end mainboards have Thunderbolt and is a lot more expensive. A Gigabyte also has the UP5TH model which is about $60 higher at $250 uh, while the UP4TH is aimed more for the mainstream audience and priced at $184.99. Now let's take a look at the accessories that come with this package first before we delve into the features of the board itself. Inside the box you get what's the IO shield you get say it a 6G cables uh, two of them are angled and two of them are straight and all of them are latched also get an SLI connector a multilingual installation guidebook the driver CD includes also all the software you need and the user's manual which is quite detailed all in English on first glance, the GA-Z77X-UP4TH looks similar to the GA-Z77X-UD3H previously released by Gigabyte and of course there are some minor differences. Uh, similarities, you get uh, almost the same layout as a PCIe. You even get uh, the three PCIe layouts. You get a PLX chip there. I believe this is the 8605 for switching since that is a four lane uh, uh, bridge you get uh, you can this is for the single PCIe X1 slots here through three and you also get a PCIe X16 slot a PCIe X16 that runs at 8x it's actually actually it is 8x mechanical as you can see there there are no connectors past that halfway point so and uh, this last one here is a 4x slot of course you need an Ivy Bridge processor to use that there is even a sticker down there to inform you of that and uh, if you are running triple SLI you can run at 8x 8x and around 8x 4x 4x if you're running dual SLI you're running it at 8x and 8x and if you want to run 16x all the time of course you're going to install it at the topmost PCIe slot and also the M SATA port in there that's similarly found on the UD3H it is shared also with the SATA port here on the right, uh, one of the Intel SATA uh, 3G ports, the port 5. If you populate this port right here with an M SATA SSD, you will lose functionality of the SATA 2 port 5 here, uh, one of the black ones down here. Of course, you get four of them and you get the standard 2, so for six total, powered through the Intel Z77 chip. And you also get here at the bottom. A front panel USB. You have well, one, two, three front panel USB ports. Uh, port headers. You get the system fan down here as well, and you get the front panel connectors, which are color coded, so they're easier to, uh, very easy to install even without looking through the manual. They're also labeled down there, so uh, you can just, if you look closely, you can just uh, follow it. And there's also the polarity marked, not just color coded, so it's really very easy to use. You also have the COM panel there. And you have the trusted platform module, another system fan header, and the front panel audio. Of course, I got used to the older layout of a Gigabyte where you had the front panel audio right here in the middle. So that is a, uh, it's nice that it is down there where it most commonly is. And there's also an SPDIF connector down there. And uh, let's see what the codec is for the audio. It actually is an ALC 892. Although curiously, it says here that it's 108 dB, which is uh, most likely a mistake since the ALC 892 codec is not actually does not actually have that uh, signal to noise ratio. Um, since it most likely is the same PCB as the 
Um, UD3H, which uses a, 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 via, a better via audio codec, uh, they probably just uh, forgot to remove that information there. But definitely the ALC 892 cannot, uh, doesn't have an 808 dB signal to noise ratio for DAC. Uh, I believe the ALC 889 has that. So uh, that's probably one, uh, just a minor mistake on their part there. And uh, let's see what other features are, are printed here in this PCB. You get uh, 2x copper PCB, which is uh, mostly correct, similar. Uh, you get the Thunderbolt, of course, USB 3.0, NVIDIA SLI, and ATI Crossfire X functionality. And uh, let's go back here to uh, the, the connectors down here. You have the USB 3.0 connector. Of course, the this is also powered by the Intel chip. doesn't have... Uh, doesn't use an extra chip down there and this is for the 24 pin power connector and a system fan and the memory then slots which have two locks uh, one on top one on the bottom and these are of course dual channel memory supporting up to 2400 uh, megahertz currently in the BIOS uh, I don't know if they're going to be releasing an updated BIOS with a support for 2666 memory but they most likely will since there's uh, those Mirror modules are becoming popular lately, and you have your other system uh, fan down there, and a CPU fan, of course. A CPU fan. You can see that the layout. Let me just show it what it looks like. It is very similar to the uh, UD3H in terms of clearance. There's a little bit of a gap between the um, the processor and the DIMM slot. So something standard like the um, which I use all the time. This this heatsink, uh, it's uh, the Cooler Master to Hyper 212 Plus and the Hyper 212 Evo. It would fit perfectly here, even with the fan installed. It uh, you can install a uh, populate the memory module here in the first one. But of course, if you just have a pair of memory, mo memory modules, the manual for the uh, UP4 TH suggests that you populate these gray slots first. And uh, let's move down here. You also get this. Uh, see this higher power stage on here, of course, makes the uh, part of the ultra durable 5 design. You get you need less space now. Uh, this is actually an 8 plus 2 power phase design, it's much more efficient uh, compared to and consumes even less power compared to uh, other motherboards and previous gigabyte uh, motherboard designs. You get also the uh, 8 pin power connector back there, and the heat sinks there, uh, they're small, as you can see, that uh, there's actually. Little pad there, and it's also bracketed at the back. That's uh, that's uh, that's interesting that they have done that. Uh, and also, uh, the PCB it looks quite gorgeous with the uh, uh, with the new gigabyte design. It definitely does not look like any mainstream uh, motherboard. And let's go back to the features here. Let's uh, look at the back panel. Of course, the audio codec, as mentioned, ALC 892, Realtek. And uh, you get, of course, the main feature of this motherboard. You get a pair of Thunderbolt ports. And uh, if you're if you uh, first time you're seeing a Thunderbolt port and you're telling yourself that they look mighty similar to a mini display port, you are, in fact, correct. And uh, they are actually backwards compatible. You can plug in a mini display port display and it will show up here. They use the same form factor, but of course, Thunderbolt provides a lot more bandwidth. You can uh, daisy chain, I, I believe, so 12 devices plus a display in each of these. So that's a lot of stuff to do uh, compared to a USB 3.0, which is what, maximum 5 uh, gigabits per second. And guess you get a uh, gigabit Ethernet here. Let's look for the chipset. I believe it's a Realtek. Yeah, I see it there. It is a Realtek. RTL 811F uh, gigabit and you also get these as you can see there is a sticker here that indicates the that you should plug in your mouse and your keyboard on these ports if you notice they're all USB 3.0 ports and of course only these two run off the Intel uh, chip natively so that means they're the first ones uh, prioritized to be detected on boot up you need drivers installed on these two on the top and these two above the HDMI port so uh, these are actually powered by let's see a um, via VL800 uh, chip and of course I, I 
if I understand, the VA, uh, VLA 100 supports a UASP, of course, for future enclosures. When those enclosures become popular, they, of course, uh, provide a lot more faster uh, transfer rate than the standard 5 uh, gigabits per second currently. You get uh, HDMI, full-size HDMI. You get a DVI connector and a VGA connector. If you want to use the IGP, you can use those. Two, three, and you can also use either one or both of the uh, Thunderbolt connectors or slash mini display port connectors, even for Virtu. See, it has Virtu sticker there, so it has Virtu support. And you also get, of course, a combination PS2 port here at the rear if you have one of those uh, legacy mouse or legacy keyboard. I still use a legacy keyboard. So that is good for me. I can use that. And it pretty much covers the overview of the Gigabyte Z77X-UP4TH Thunderbolt motherboard. Of course, the thing to do now is put in our uh, processor, our i7-3770K processor, and see how well this motherboard performs.